I got an even bigger box back from the fab this time. Now, I've already opened this, but I'm told that unboxing videos are a big thing on YouTube, so I put everything back in the box and we're gonna open it again. Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. This video is a part of my series on the Electronic Lead Screw Project. I have received quite a few comments on the amount of detail that I'm showing in this series, and I'd like to say a few words about that briefly. I think there's a real demand on a platform like YouTube for fast-paced, high-energy, highly edited, highly condensed, highly produced content. And if that's what you want, that's great. There's lots of great stuff out there for you. But if I'm trying to learn something, I find that kind of content to not be very useful for me. It ends up being more a video about, look at this amazing thing that I made, than it is a video about, look how easy it is to do something and here's how you could do it too. And with this series, I'm trying to present as much detail as I can showing the whole process of developing an open source hardware and open source software project in a way that doesn't skip over all of those details. And then I realize that that's limiting my audience and I think that's okay. For those of you that do like this content, I have really been loving the positive feedback and encouragement and the small amount of revenue that it generates keeps this channel going on a hobby basis at least. But I tend to think of this more as an opportunity for me to give something back to the maker community that has provided so much information and so many learning opportunities for me. But let's take a look at what's in the box. So this is how it came packaged from the fab. Lots of bubble wrap, lots and lots of bubble wrap. Now this I find hilarious. They sent me a button. Uh, I don't know if this is a thing in China, but it is not a thing here. I don't really need any more flair. I've got plenty. Anyway, um, so everything comes wrapped in this. This is not static shielding, but this is plastic wrap, the pink stuff that will not build up static. So these are the test fixture boards. And I got five of these. We'll take a closer look at these in a minute. And then I got a hundred of the actual PC boards for the lead screw. And these come packaged in strips of a hundred. Put together with a piece of masking tape and we'll take a little bit closer look at some of these as well. Okay, let's start by taking a look at these PC boards. So they come in strips of 10. They've just slapped them together with masking tape to keep them together. Let me just pull one of these off. Now these look every bit as good as the ones that we had before. I looked these over under a microscope and I don't see anything wrong with them. The only major change that I made is I changed the size of the pads for the LEDs down here because these LEDs were not uh, sitting level before. The pads were a little bit big and when I went and checked the data sheet, it turns out the pad that I had just pulled off of the uh, crowdsourced footprint library was not actually correct for that LED. Changed the size of the pads and these seem to be sitting a lot closer. Back looks good. I cannot complain. The quality of the silk screen seems to be a little bit different. Um, I am very happy with it though. Uh, this is, uh, when the, with the larger run, I think they're using a different process for the silk screen, but these are great. I'm very happy with them. Of course, I haven't tested any of these electrically because I don't have any way to make connections to them. Let's take a look at the test fixture PC boards. I showed these briefly, or showed the design of this briefly in a previous video, but let's take a little bit closer look here today um, I'm really happy with how these turned out. Ultimately what's going on here is I got a set of pads here that the board to be tested will fit onto and will line up with, and then a bunch of support hardware. So I've replicated the hardware that's used in the display module just so that we can test the display. So I've got um, a bunch of components up here that simulate, that take the output from the board that's under test, simulate the uh, capacitive and inductive effects of a long and shielded cable. And then I have the same display driver chip that is going to be on the display board. I've got a couple of MELF diodes down here. I love MELF diodes. 
a couple of MELF diodes that are here to simulate a couple of buttons being pressed so that I can communicate with this chip and make sure we're reading the input. And then I'm using that chip to uh, run the output LEDs, a red and a green, to show the status of the things that I'm testing, the 3.3 volt regulator, the stepper driver out, the alarm input, and the EEPROM that's on the board. Over here on the other side, I am testing the voltage regulator that is on the board under test by running the output of that 3.3 volt regulator down to a bank of resistors that should draw the same amount of current as the microcontroller it'll be powering. And then up here I have a bank of optocouplers that will simulate the stepper or servo driver that this thing is gonna be connected to. So when the board under test generates a signal that's supposed to drive a high signal to the stepper driver, well, that'll actually go into an optocoupler and then I'll read off the other side of the optocoupler whether it's working. So the idea with this board is this will sit down on top of a uh, microcontroller. So this will sit on top of one of these TI Launchpad microcontrollers and then this board will sit on top of that and it'll do a very rapid test and display the outputs here. But to connect this board onto here, we're going to have to put some pogo pins in these slots so that we have spring-loaded contacts. Uh, there is one thing I had to fix on this board that I messed up. Um, there are, I got five of them, I've got three of them right here. And I don't know how well you'll be able to see it, but up in, this cor up in the corners there are mounting holes. And uh, these holes I had spec'd at 100 mils, which is 100 thousandths of an inch. And unfortunately, that's not the correct size. I actually needed to pass a three millimeter screw, so 125 mils would have been appropriate. And I remember now that when I designed the board, I just put something in there and I figured I'll go figure out what size this actually needs to be and I'll come back later. And I never actually got back to it. But that's easy. A uh, couple of minutes on a knee mill with an eighth inch end mill and, uh, and I just used the DRO to dial to the four corners and just punch those holes out to the correct size. Okay, let's talk about pogo pins. These are the spring-loaded pins that I'm gonna be using to make the connections to the board, and I've got two sizes. These are P75E3s, and these are P75E2s. And the reason that I need two different sizes is because I have two different diameters of hole. So let me see if I can get this where you can see it. So it's a spring-loaded pin with a barrel and a spring-loaded tip. And the way this works is the tip just fits into the bottom of one of these solder pads and it compresses so that I, it will make a connection to that pad. Can you see that? Boy, it's really small, isn't it? Anyway, there's two different sizes because this size fits these pins over here, but the pads up here at the top have larger holes and this side of pogo pin will just go right through it. And so I need one with a slightly larger head to fit properly into those. And that's what these P75 E3s are. And those will fit into the larger holes up here on the top and provide those spring contacts. So what I need to do is take one of these boards and solder in a bunch of these pins vertically into these pads so that they stick up. And when I put this board on top, they make contact. And the idea is that all of that will fit through this fixture that goes around it. We can put this on top and the, those pins will make contact. But I've been thought about it for quite a while trying to figure out how do I actually put these pins in here and get them straight so they don't rub on the side and they're at the right height. And, and realize that what I really need to do is probably put the frame on here, put the board that I'm gonna test on here, and then flip it over and put the pins through from the back side or you know something like that and get them to the right height. And I realize I don't actually have to do that. I know how high these need to be. I know how much I want it to compress. And so what I can do is actually just make some spacers and just stack two boards together. So I have the pins drop through the bottom board. That's where I'm gonna actually solder them. And then I have the second board on top just to act as a spacer. So I have all these pins hanging out here, and if I turn it over and tap it, they'll settle down through and they will seat. Let me turn this to see if you can see it. They will seat properly into the pads on the bottom board, 
just to control the height. So to control the height, I just change the height of these 3D printed spacers that I'm using here to space the boards apart. And I can control how far those pins extend through the board. So that's really it. I just stuck all the right pins in all the right holes, just stuck them all the way through, and then sandwiched these boards together with these little 3D printed spacers. And so now I can turn this over, tap them down, and just solder them in place. Now I'm gonna solder all of these pins in place except for one, and that's the ground pin. The ground pin I actually want to be slightly longer so that when I put the board on top, the ground pin makes contact first. And the reason for that is just to make sure that I'm not, when I connect up the five volt logic, uh, uh, excuse me, so that when I connect the five volt power supply, it doesn't end up routing through some of the electronics on the board and applying a five volt signal into the microcontroller that's underneath. I wanna actually have the um, ground connected first so that anything that's referenced to ground or clamped to ground or regulated with respect to ground will have the ground present before the power is actually applied. So I want the ground pin to stick up a little more. So I'll solder everything but the ground pin and then I'll come back and uh, change out the spacers to make them slightly longer and then put the ground pin in. Let me just start with the easiest one to get my iron on and see how this goes. Yeah, I'm not super happy with that. Let me change out the tip on this iron. I'm not loving how these are behaving. I think maybe the pogo pins are not taking the solder very well. They're not interacting very well with the flux. I did not expect this to be the hard part of this project. I expected this to be just a quick aside. And I'd do a little montage of me doing the soldering and then everything would be fine. Okay, I'm gonna start by just putting a little bit of this tacky flux right here, and I'm just gonna reheat these joints and see how they behave. Yeah, yeah, much better. Do the same thing on these other ones. I think the issue is that the uh, the pogo pins just probably had a lot of oxidation on them, or the material is not ideal for this, or you know something that made it not flow well. because those are just wetting and going beautifully now. Okay, the only one that's not soldered at this point is the ground pin, and I was gonna put in an extra spacer, but I'm thinking now it might be easier just to heat up the solder joint and just push the pin down the amount that I want, and then that'll spring load it so that it'll pop up higher than the others. I think I'm gonna go that route just to make this as easy as possible. Then I'll heat it up and then compress the spring and let it cool. There we go. That should be all that's needed. Pretty good. 
make sure this is going to fit over the pins. Oh yeah, that looks beautiful. And one of these boards will fit on top of that. Yep, just fine. That'll press down and make contact. See, it's spring-loaded. Okay, uh, let me put all the rest of the connectors that we need onto this board. Okay, I finished up all the soldering and yeah, it was a lot more of a pain than I thought it would be. The uh, connectors down here all went together just fine, but the pogo pins I had a lot of trouble with until I added more of this uh, paste flux. And this is uh, chip quick, you can read the number, there'll be a link over in the description um, just for the stuff that I used. And this is a water wash no clean tack flux. And so after doing all the soldering, of course, everything was messy. I took it in and cleaned it with hot water. And I'm pretty happy with the results. You can see it looks pretty good. The uh, connections here on the top all look okay. On the bottom, uh, it's not exactly what I'd like, you know, but it, I think they're solid and everything looks pretty good and I got it cleaned up. So at least I don't have any, you know, oddities down there. So let's power this thing up and do at least some initial testing. I don't have the software for the test fixture yet, but we can at least power it up and make sure that the PC board's okay. So first thing is just applying power. And we do have uh, two lights, one for five volts, one for 3.3 volts, which is what I would expect. And now let me do a couple of quick checks just to make sure that the power we're putting down to the uh, microcontroller board is correct. So this should be a ground and this should be five volts. It is. This should be 3.3 volts, 3.293, close enough. And it should have exactly the same thing down here. This should be ground, five volts, it is, and 3.3, 3.295, okay. That looks close enough. And let me check what we're actually gonna put to the board under test. That should be five volts. Let's connect the pin, connect the probes the correct direction. It should be five volts, and it is, and this should be nothing because we're expecting 3.3 volts to come out of the board. Okay, that looks all right. Let's stack it up on the microcontroller. At least we know the power is not gonna totally fry the microcontroller. Okay, so that's gonna stack up there. Then this fixture goes on top. And let me just go ahead and stick some screws through just to make sure everything stays aligned. I don't have the parts that go underneath this. The rest of the frame's printed at the moment, so this will just have to do for a mock-up test. And let's stick one of these boards on. And what I expect when we power this up and then put this board on is I should get the three volt and the five volt lights coming on here. And we can check and make sure that we're outputting the 3.3 back to the board. Um, we should be generating some output to the display. And I honestly don't know if any of these lights are gonna come on because I can't remember if I have those wired to any of these same LEDs as we would normally see with the, um, with the display. So the firmware on the bottom of this board just thinks it's an electronic lead screw. It doesn't have the firmware for the test fixture yet, so I don't actually know if any of that's gonna come on. It'd be nice if it did, but I don't know that it will. Let's power this up, got that. And if I look down underneath here, I can see, I don't know if you can see that, there's a blue LED right there that's lit and there's some red LED, so I know the microcontroller's powered up. Okay, so that's powered up, that looks good. Let's drop the board on top and there we go, 3V3 and five volts. Let's do a little testing here and make sure that that's actually giving us what we think. So there's a ground pin here. And here is the 3.3 volt output. Looks like 3.3, let me check it down here on the board on the test fixture. There it is, and that goes through a voltage divider, so this should be about half of that, 1.645, okay. So that looks good. 
and I can just feel the resistor bank down here getting warm. So we know that that's feeding back through to the load. And over here, the LEDs for the test fixture and nothing is lighting up. I don't know why that is yet. Um, I need to go back and mess with the software on this. Like I said, I don't have the software that's designed specifically to drive these in here yet. So, you know, it could be a problem with the board or it could be a problem with the test fixture or it could just be that the software is not addressing the LEDs. I need to go look at that. Well, that's it for today. I now have a bunch of work to do on the firmware for the test fixture so I can get these boards tested, packaged, and made available for all of you. I had considered just kind of shooting some video of the soldering process and then delaying the video until I had a chance to get everything done, but I decided to err on the side of getting stuff out sooner so you can kind of come along for the ride and see the whole process. Now, several people have asked about pricing for the electronic lead screw boards, and that information will be available shortly, but I'm not gonna put it in the videos just because these videos are gonna be out there basically forever, and the pricing is gonna change over time, and I'd rather not have that in the video getting out of date. If you are enjoying the series, please give me a thumbs up, feel free to subscribe to the channel, and leave me a comment. I'd like to know what you think. Thank you for watching.